This next piece is really kind of where we get into some of the meat of this. Um, policies, objectives, strategies, tactics, and time. Uh, uh, it, again, this is pretty normal business 101 stuff. Um, it's a little bit different. I do have some nuance here. Um, but this is, this is relatively straightforward stuff. Um, and so this is kind of the next, uh, part of the, of the five pieces here. Um, it's again, when I, I said a few minutes ago, it's actually easy to kind of skip steps. Uh, this is the step that I kind of skipped and it, it caused some problems for, for one of my clients. So I'm, I'm very cognizant about not skipping it anymore. If you have, uh, if you have confidence in your VMV, then this is the next step. If you don't have confidence in your VMV, do not go to this step. Stick with the VMV until you're ready to move on. But once you're here, I think this part gets to be pretty interesting, right? The first part was visionary. If you're you know, doing VMV, you're thinking about what does the future look like for whatever widget I'm trying to create. But now when you're doing post, that's when things start to happen. That's when you can actually start um, maybe actualizing your, your, your ideas. Um, but it's still not necessarily fun yet. Um, it's not fun yet. Uh, when I have tried skipping some of these steps, this is the this is the section that aggravates clients. So I want to I want to be very clear about that. Um, and I'm sorry, we are not skipping it. So when you do uh, when all of these parts kind of fit together. And you're kind of at the center of this pentagon, right? That um, policies, objective strategy, and tactics and time, temporal, they all work together. And you're at the center of all of this stuff. And that's pretty cool because you start to be able to um, make some decisions. You start to feel like you're kind of captain of your own ship. But then policies happen. The first thing you tackle is policies. Uh, we had a lemonade stand. We were on a military base. You know, uh, my dad was in the army. Um, we had to comply with local base requirements for having uh, a lemonade stand. And local MPs came by and asked us some questions. Uh, we were fine. I mean, the world was different. We did not need a food handler's permit to have a lemonade stand. Um, but that's the hyper level, hyper local level of policies, right? At the other end of the spectrum, uh, we're trying to build an elevator on the moon. You can bet there are some global policies necessary also that we're going to have to deal with. We just had Michelle Hanlon, a professor of law, of space law, who teaches other students to be space lawyers, right? Policies determine your potential and possible actions. Let me just let that sink in for a second. Policies determine your potential and your possible actions. They are, you know, um, I was a, I was a troublemaker child, for sure I was. And I tended to scribble outside the lines. The policies are the lines. You cannot scribble outside of them. I have a lot of um, examples for what can go wrong if you scribble outside the lines. Um, uh, you know, Right now, because the world is still, you know, in some form of lockdown, there are a lot of small businesses that have been started in the last year because of the, the, the virus 
that are um, home businesses. They are home businesses because that is the only option that person had, and that's what they're going to do. But there's also city and county and state regulations. We had uh, Congressman Banke uh, in earlier. You know, he's trying to create new policies that benefit the um, aerospace community in the region. Um, this stuff impacts you all the time, whether it's parking tickets because you parked in the wrong spot or homeowners associations that say you can't have a home owned business run out of your house, right? So these policies set the stage for what you can and cannot do. And yeah, you can write your congressman and yeah, you can go to your city council and get policies to change. But day one, those policies exist and you have to operate within those policies. So for my own example of um, working on the elevator, uh, the lunar elevator, you know, we were out of business for a long time when, uh, and I'll talk about the history tomorrow, but uh, we only restarted the company as a company just a few years ago, uh, 2016, 2017. Um, and so that's a state letter level policy that we have to comply with. Um, you know, this conversation that we're having now is both a national and international, um, uh, conversation. Are there policies we have to comply with? Um, currently not that I'm aware of, but it is one of the reasons why we switched away from zoom, which we've used the first three months to using uh, Google Meet for better or worse this month because there are national policies that preclude some of our attendees from participating because we are using uh, a Chinese founded platform of Zoom. So, so these things impact us all the time and it's so easy to just take your VMV, your beloved new shiny vision mission values and decide, oh, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I guarantee you, you're going to get burned if you just go and do it. So take the time to understand your policies and jurisdictions. Those are the, those are the rules you have to comply with. Um, full disclosure, I have not always complied with every, every jurisdiction and every policy, but I try really, really hard to do this. And the consequences of not doing it are extraordinary. So policies, don't skip it. Spend money on lawyers if you don't know this stuff yourself. This is important. Again, a really fast way to have your vision, mission, values come crashing down is to get this wrong. Um, strategy and tactics. Uh, I like this stuff. I'm, I, I really like this stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I said in the beginning, I'm a former U S Marine. I really like the idea, the big picture stuff of strategy, identifying the specifics of action in tactics and the day to day, you know, doing the task of skirmishes. Um, Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there's a lot of books on this topic. Um, but again, it's big ideas that kind of uh, strategy is the big ideas. Tactics is kind of more uh, you know, operational level and skirmishes are the things you do on an everyday basis. Uh, you should have a plan for how you want to accomplish your big idea, right? Um with with uh, a lemonade stand trying to get a fish tank is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, come out come out after school, set up the stand, sell stuff to cars that go by, repeat. It wasn't super complicated. Uh, it got more complicated when our neighbors started to copy us, and because we were twins and we played on the the twin cute factor, which 
seems ridiculous now, but it kind of was true back then. Um, we actually had two different uh, lemonade stands. So we expanded probably faster than, than uh, most uh, 10, 12-year-olds. I don't remember how old I was. About 12, 11, something like that. Uh, so strategy, tactics, and skirmishes, right? Um, time is... It's one of those things that so it can be so easily overlooked. Um, uh, but there's lessons there, right? Like we're always in the moment, right? We're on this screen. There's 20 of us, 25 of us on this call right now. Um, that's that's our present. Uh, we're going to be at this tomorrow. We're going to talk about um, lunar elevators tomorrow. Yesterday we talked about earth elevators, past and future, right? Um, but it's bigger than that. You can learn really important things from the past. Uh, you can use it as a tool for leveraging your current present and leveraging your potential future. So I've looked into big infrastructure projects. Um, Panama Canal, my family has some heritage there. Um, uh, Golden Gate Bridge, um, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, Transcontinental Railroad, Lewis and Clark Commission. My family has some heritage there. So I've looked at these things and tried to figure out how to apply the lessons of those big infrastructure projects to our current reality. Um, next month at Blue Marble Week, we're going to have a special guest. I'm not going to name him, but he was... Uh, Oh, no, he's approved. I can't tell. I'm going to say it. Uh, Roger Lanis is, uh, he was the chief historian at NASA, and um, he wrote a really interesting paper about, uh, he was also one of the chief curators, uh, director, associate director at the Smithsonian. So he's got a crazy cool history. And he wrote an interesting set of papers about how, um, America could use uh, the parks system and the Tennessee Valley Authority and several other governmental programs as, as tools, as lessons from the past to inform the current and future space program. So I think that's super fascinating. And, and one of the reasons I'm bringing him in is for this particular reason to talk about um, uh, lessons learned. Um, and understanding where you are, the actual state of the art, so does state of the art. Understanding that is super important. Um, you know, we talked, Tim, Tim was joking about what does the future mean? Um, tomorrow we're going to have a, a speaker, Mitchell Zappa, uh, Michelle Zappa going to come in and he's, he's going to talk about, um, uh, uh, about a tool that he has called a technology radar. It's somewhat similar to Michael Mealing's conversation about technology readiness levels, but he's looking at new technologies that are on, you know, that are be, that are built. They are the state of the art, and that that state of the art is constantly moving. So you have to be aware of that all the time in order to make good decisions about the future. The future is super fuzzy, but if you have a really good handle on the present, then you have a chance of making good decisions based on the future. And the last piece of objectives, or the last piece of post is objectives. And I want to dig into that uh, very carefully but there's no clever slide for it. There's no like, you know, here's an example how to do it. Go back to your vision, mission, values. You prioritized and deprioritized some of the words. So now you've got this long list of, of words. And, uh, you know, they're characterized by priority. Take those individual words or individual phrases and create objectives around every one of those words. But you can't do that until you figured out 
your strategy and your tactics. You can't do that until you figured out your policies and you can't do that until you figured out, you know, past, present and future as it relates to your project. So you've got to do policy, strategy, tactics and time before you can do objectives, but you must do those objectives. You must figure them out. And there's lots of resources around smart goals on the internet. Um, uh, smart, what's it stand for? Um, meaningful, actionable, something uh, relevant and timely. Specific, measurable, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and timely. Yeah. yeah. So SMART goals, again, lots of books around these things. I use the word objective because I use goals in a different case and I don't want to blur those. But SMART goals is kind of a, not a common uh, descriptor. So tons of resources about that. I call those objectives um, and and they're usually, when they talk about smart, uh, you know, about specific and measurable, they also mean defining KPIs, key performance indicators, for those objectives. It's not good enough to say, I want to buy a fish tank. My brother and I want to buy a fish tank. Um, you have to put a date on it. And you have to put a price tag on it. And it's probably a really good idea to say what kind of fish tank, right? We're not going to buy uh, a fish tank big enough to put a killer whale in like they, they used to have it in San Diego. We're going to get a very specific kind of fish tank. It's a certain size. And there's a time, time component to that because we saw the fish tank on a garage sale and they wanted to get rid of it that day. Well, we couldn't do that that day. So we made a deal with them to pick it up before they moved. We only had three weeks to do it. So smart, smart goals, smart objectives, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Um, but you can only do these objectives after you figured out what policies you have to work within, whatever your strategy and tactics are, and then the past, present, and future. Is that super clear? All right. Questions? Any questions? Any comments? Oh, David, you know Roger Lonis. He's actually pretty amazing. He was going to join us uh, two months ago and last month, and I'm not going to get into personal reasons for why he didn't, but they were good reasons. And I'm super excited that he's going to join us next month. He just confirmed with, with he just confirmed that um, two days ago. So pretty excited about that. Um, uh, I would love to have him in here uh, for a long time, but we're only going to have him probably for half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay. Um, questions? VMV. Any questions on VMV? Any questions on post? Any comments? Yeah, adding skirmishes to that strategy and tactics picture uh, for someone with a non-military background actually fills kind of a gap that in other business fields, people don't use that term and it's just strategy and tactics. And that just doesn't seem like it's quite doing the full job. So I appreciate the, the addition of the, the chessboard there. Happy to happy to do it. Yeah, um, that actually came out of a fintech client I had um, mm -hmm. about this time last year. Uh, they strategy and tactics is an incomplete picture, yeah. right? Um, um, because when you're actually doing the task, and you've done a lot of business management stuff, um, when you're actually doing the work, it's really hard to uh, stay focused on the big picture of strategy and tactics because you've got a report due by three o'clock this afternoon by such and such a supervisor, right? Uh, you've got, you know, you've, you, you I know this because I know you, you've had lots of um, uh, staff that owe reports to you. That's all at the skirmish level. 
Um, and that's, that's the work that's getting done, right? It might be cool to talk about big ideas of vision, mission, values, but, you know, being boots on the ground Marine in the dirt, that's when the real work gets done. Fortunately, I never saw combat. I'm super glad I never saw combat, but I, uh, I can, uh, you know, lots of my friends did. And, and that's really kind of informed me. Like, um, that's the work. The skirmish level is the work level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Blue Marble Week, the creation of it was a tactic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm speaking for Tim, and I know that that's not appropriate. So I'm going to tell my own personal opinions on Blue Marble Week. Um, you know, they had this idea of this... Um, uh, of this congressional bill they wanted passed, how are they going to do it? They needed to get buy-in from the public. How are they going to do that? Let's hold a virtual conference, right? And yeah. so that's kind of strategy. That's kind of tactics. And then this event that we're currently in, that is the skirmish. If you want to like, you know, bring in the hierarchy. Cool. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, tying that in and then your description of blue marble as a tool a tactical tool for the strategy of passing the space act we had kevin barry's talk yesterday that highlighted some of the same historical events on the temporal piece that you just talked about uh revisiting again the the golden gate bridge the panama canal the um even space florida that we had an event yep. specifically tying to the other day you know i think um this is really enlightening about the way that Foundation for the Future is following some of these best practices in bringing about the big idea that they have for the Space Act. Exactly. It's pretty yeah. interesting kind of like watching this unfold, right? I'm super nearby, but I'm not actually on the inside. Um, and and uh, yeah, it's, it's really neat kind of watching this happen. I'm very close, but not in the foundation. And that's kind of an important thing for me to see it from the outside, near nearby, but outside. Um, it's, it's, yeah. So strategy, tactics, skirmishes, vision, mission, values, 